So we will interrupt our studies of the book of Hebrews for another message and Lord willing after that we continue with Hebrews. Um, but the, the title for today is Wisdom for the Young and uh, one of the reasons to do this now is because we have young people here and um, there are not always so much opportunities to speak uh, to them. So. Um, it's also a thing that uh, as, uh, as one grows older, and uh, I do too, uh, one thinks more about uh, the past years, the youth, how it has been spent, uh, what has been invested in those years and how that pays off in later years. So, so all these things um, yeah, give food for thought and of course uh, the one place to go is the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, to see what it teaches us about that. And I sort of want to to frame this with two questions, and this is certainly not uh, for youth alone, absolutely not. Um, it's, uh, it, it are questions that we have to ask ourselves um, as believers. Um, and one is very obvious and maybe you would say silly question and that is are you a Christian are you a Christian and uh, most of us I assume that uh, certainly watching this this message would say yes of course of course I am and then the next question is basically it's the same question but packed in a different way and that may make you think before you answer, I, I assume. Uh, and that is, how is your relationship with Jesus going? Because if you are a Christian, you have a relationship with Jesus. The word Christian says it, you are following Christ. And so, if you are in a relationship, you, you speak to him, you hear him speak to you, you read about him, you're involved, you spend your time with, uh, his, uh, with his business. So how is your relationship with Jesus going? And um, that is something we have to ask ourselves uh, every day, actually. So I get back to these questions, but that's kind of the, 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 the framework. Um, and I want to read from uh, Solomon, the wisest man whoever lived, what does he say about this matter? And I want to read from Ecclesiastes chapter 11, and um, by exception, I will not read it from the scriptures, but I made sort of my own translations or, or translation or put it in my own words, you could say, and I did so purely to, um, to make, to, to speak to, yeah, to the youth uh, in particular. Um, so I put it in very everyday popular language and so I want to read from Ecclesiastes 11 verse 9 the first half of the verse and it says there and in my words be happy in your youth follow your heart and all the nice things you see now that you are young so that sounds very welcome to uh, most young people do what you want have fun and it's really the spirit of this world and of our times. And this uh, idea is promoted by media, and by the music industry. Use alcohol, use drugs, try all kinds of sex. Yeah? There is the slogan, try before you die. Or as the musician, singer Kesha sang uh, so, some 10 years ago, I guess, uh, live fast, die young. This echoes still today, die young. So why worry? And this is really part of the so-called youth culture. And the uh, parents and grandparents actually promote it. It is a, um, a me first attitude where narcissism rules. Me, myself and I. That's what it's all about. And so the wrong principles are taught to children. They think 
that youth is a time of carefree fun. And meanwhile, parents, school, the community, they will deal with the difficult stuff and the heavy stuff. But you, as a youth, enjoy it while you can and try to extend it as long as possible. Now, from a biblical perspective, this is the greatest nonsense. It's a lie. Youth is not a period of wild life that should be lived as long as possible, because adulthood is, uh, is boring. Youth is not a period of irresponsibility. And the youth culture is really a death culture. In reality, and this is important, in reality youth is a very critical time. Physically, mentally and spiritually. It sets the stage for the rest of life. It's like the foundation of a house. So why did Solomon write what we just read? Well, that becomes clear if we read the rest of what follows. So I will read again, uh, starting at chapter 9 and then going, uh, sorry, chapter 11, verse 9, and then going on through chapter 12, verse 1, again in my words. Be happy in your youth, follow your heart and all the nice things you see. And now that you are young, but know that God will bring you into account for all of this. Remove evil from your heart and from your body, because youth will soon disappear. Seek God early, and life will be so much better. Solomon was wiser than the parents and educators of today who supported the youth culture. He does say, enjoy your youth, have fun, go after your desires. But he adds three warnings to it, and that makes a big difference. The first one is, know that God watches and will bring you into account for all of this. That changes really the whole perspective of pursuing joy and desires. There is good am amusement, sure. But there's also sinful excess. The good amusement is wholesome and it is productive. And the bad will return in penalty sometime later and it will leave scars in the body and to the physical health. And this is really something that we see today. This, this idea of live fast, die young makes the youth not care about their health. Uh, they use all kinds of uh, drugs, alcohol, um, and yeah, the expression is uh, as if there's no tomorrow, because this is in their mind. Don't worry about tomorrow. Just live fast, enjoy, and you you can die young. Um, and so this is this also has an effect on um, changes they make to their body whether it's piercings, uh, tattoos, um, but also the whole gender issue, of course, has to do with that. It's very tragic. These uh, scars, um, they stay. They stay the rest of, uh, of your life. But even, even um, worse uh, is, of course, what happens in spiritual level. So that's the first warning. Know that God watches and will bring you into account for all of this. The second warning or advice warning is that youth will soon disappear. Elsewhere he, he uses this. Eh? It's all vanity. Not only do the youth years pass quickly, but they are in most cases useless. They are unsatisfying and they're unproductive. As one said, and I think the original quote is from Bernard Shaw in 1931, uh, he said, youth is wasted on the young. And there's really lots of truth in that. In other words, if all we do is having fun, then our lives will indeed be useless, unsatisfying and unproductive. But if we use our youth the right way, then these years become meaningful and productive, and something good will grow into our adult years. 
Notice what Solomon says. He says, remove evil from your heart and from your body. It means get rid of all the things that will bring sorrow, that will produce grief later on. And it also have physical implications. Paul also speaks about this uh, to the Galatians in uh, Galatia, uh, Galatians 6 verse 8. He says, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. In other words, that which you do that has physical uh, in, uh, effects, they, you will reap from this. You will have consequences. Uh, see the consequences of this. They will not go away. In many cases. But remove evil from the heart first. The heart first. That's the mind. The emotions. Once the mindset is right. Then the flesh is more easily controlled. In, in the Hebrew. This, um, this uh, is what makes up the inner man. Have we spoke about this uh, recently. Uh, and I will write down the Hebrew word. It's, uh, it's lev. So that's uh, Lamed Beth, Lev, and that, um, that means heart, but it also means mind. So it's, it's heart, the mind, the body, and the soul, it's, it's a unity, it goes together, it's what makes up the person. So you cannot only um, uh, stop having certain habits, but having the same mindset, because these habits will, will come back. Or, or desires, or lusts, or addictions even. So uh, they have to remove, be removed from the heart first. The heart has to be renewed. Then the flesh can be more easily controlled. But it has to be removed. That is the advice here. So that was the second one. The third one he gives, the third advice, um, is seek God early and life will be so much better. So he doesn't only give the advice, he also says the effect of it. The advice is to seek God before experiencing the world. Eh? That's the society that we live in, which is against God. Seek God before accumulating the baggage and the penalty of sin. And before developing a flawed character. It's much easier to not get into a, a, a bad habit in the first place then having to overcome one later on, let alone addictions. So Solomon says, in other words, don't even go there. And to speak with the words of ACDC, it's a highway to hell. And they were praising it in their song, but um, of course this is a very bad thing. Don't even go there. Many Christians wish they'd found Jesus earlier because they still suffer the consequences of their godless youth. That is what Paul also means. Eh? You sow in the flesh, you will reap uh, corruption. These consequences, we have to deal with them many years afterwards. Young people have energy, they have ambition, mental capacities, and they can be so useful in the service to the Lord. And when people grow older, they often lose their idealism. They lose their zeal. So if we seek the Lord early, then we will have strength to bear the darker days. Because they will come. They are upon us actually, I would say. But once people enjoy the lusts of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, as John describes, then they are very much more easily drawn back into them. Therefore, seek God early. I have uh, for uh, over a decade a little uh, note uh, in, my, in my Bible uh, of something I, I read uh, back then. Um, and it says, uh, statistics show that if you're not saved before the age of 14, the chances are that you never will. Which means, in other words, that uh, most, by far most of the truly saved born-again Christians they were saved before the age of 14. And it's only a minority that is saved after that age. So you see how important it is to seek God early. So from the wisest man, these are three very useful advices. 
And this is another question uh, to all of us, but especially to young people. Do you like the things of the world? And you might say, what are the things of the world? Well, going out, drinking, dancing, going to concerts, going to large sports spectacles, all these kind of things. Do you like it? Do you even love them? Desire to do them? Do you look forward to the weekend when you can go out with your friends? If so, you really have to examine yourself. James writes in James 4, uh, verse 4, Know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? So if you truly love these things, you like these things, then you're an enemy of God. That's quite shocking, I would say. And we don't like to think of ourselves like that. But this is the truth. It's hard to accept. But if we continue to read in James 4, two verses down it says, But God gives more grace. And then it gives also there a lot of advices. Eh? Submit to God, resist the devil, draw nigh to God, cleanse your hands, purify your heart, all these things. And then it says, and he, God, will lift you up. So it's not just to condemn you, but it is actually to draw you out of this and to give hope and a, a blessed and eternal future. Speaking to the youth, I can say you are, you are wonderful young people and Jesus loves you and desires to hold your life. But Satan, at the same time, is priming a generation for the Antichrist. It's this generation, this current generation of young people. He, Satan, is the ruler of this world, the Bible says. And this, this culture, this world, it's like a spider's web. And to use this analogy of the web, uh, also the World Wide Web, which is a very important tool that the enemy uses. But think of a spider's web, you must get out of the entanglement of this web. Why? For pure survival. And it really made me think of a spider's web, and I was looking into this. And um, the spider does a lot of work to create this web, and actually it's, it's quite a miraculous thing if you look at it. But in this analogy that I use, it's like the enemy who is creating, doing lots of work to create this web um, that is also impressive, by the way. But once you get in, once an insect flies into this web, the vibration of the web um, alerts the spider that a meal has just arrived. And uh, the spider will quickly walk to the, to the unfortunate insect and bites it, thereby uh, injecting it with its poison, paralyzing it so that it will not be able to escape. And then it will turn it around and wrap it in its silk. And then the, uh, the insect dies and will be eaten. The sticky web of the world is doing the same to us. It gets us. And then Satan will paralyze us with poison poison of lusts, addictions, and all these things. And then we get all wrapped into it, entangled. And escape is almost impossible. And eventually we die. Now if you look at the spider's web, not all insects uh, are caught in this web. There are two types of insects that can escape. And there is a beautiful picture and analogy to, to the Christian. Two types can escape. The first are heavy insects, big and heavy insects. Especially when they fly, fly fast into the web with speed, they will simply break these thin um, uh, threads and, and fly through it. And this, this weight is a type of the, the mature Christian. Yeah, the Christian who has maturity, who has weight. Not physical weight, but spiritual weight and the movement the fast movement is uh, is activity it's faith that is alive it's not only accumulated knowledge but it's living faith uh, satan cannot catch this kind of um, of christians that are mature 
they have the word ready uh, as a counter weapon, eh, as a sword to fight uh, Satan and their, their faith is alive it's active so these, this is one of the types of inse- insects eh, that can, as a, can escape this web heavy insects the other type is really the opposite you wouldn't expect but these are butterflies and, and moths which are kind of butterflies and they are actually very light they are feather light they're also due to their their wing uh, span they are they are large so they, they are easily uh, it's easy for, to, to to be caught in a web they run great risk yeah, of hitting a, a web and they are light this typifies the immature christian the young christian the baby christian the youth they seem an easy prey for the enemy but god in his grace has equipped with them with a defense if you look at butterflies and moths their wings are covered with uh, scales and these scales easily come off so when it hits a web the scales it will it will throw off its scales the scales will, will stick to the web but the, the insect itself the butterfly can escape it is really beautiful when god created the butterfly he intended it to be, to be never caught in a web and to die in a web it is already in its design it's in its genes even when it's still a, a, a caterpillar and so again to the youth speaking to the youth you are wonderful like butterflies god never intended you to get caught in the web of this world but what you must do if this happens is throw off your scales throw off the scales that keep you stuck and that may hurt and it may cost but you'll be free and you'll be able to continue to grow into a a, a heavy insect so to speak take solomon's advice and then you can mature and have an active faith which is a relationship with jesus seek god early and your life will be so much better the time is short so going back to the questions with with which i started are you a christian and so we are easily and quickly inclined to say yes of course i am but then there comes the next question how is your relationship with jesus going and then we often have to think and we have to admit that it is faltering in many in many ways and many times many times actually we are totally not involved with jesus at all we are only working and investing in the relationship with ourselves and that means that um, it's questionable whether we are christians to begin with and um, how strong we are in that a lot lot needs to be done it's very serious it's very serious matter and so um, yeah i really want to to urge you to think about these things and um, take them at heart and uh, think of this analogy of the butterfly in the web there are costs of course but it gives you freedom and the opportunity to grow to grow in your faith it's not a game and it's not a, it's not just a matter of having fun it is serious satan is after your soul nothing else and he wants you to be damned eternally god Jesus, he wants to give you life, and life more abundantly. Amen.